dark side of the force is calling you. You underestimate the power of the dark side. Hi everyone. Um, gonna try someone else's recipe for a change. Um, this is a loose interpretation of a KBS clone, um, but it's gone through the hands of an Irishman, so um, anything can happen. Um, but you did send me one of these beers, is Mr. Big Banana. Uh, I say Mr. because this is actually a very good beer. Um, I really, really enjoyed it actually. So, what are we now? Uh, January now. So, I want something nice to drink through the winter. So, um, I'm going to brew it now. Um, chuck it in my firm fridge. Keep it nice and cool and just leave it there for ages to brew out. Brew out. So, But, of course, uh, in New Zealand here, we can never get the same malt as what uh, you can on the other side of the world. But I was surprised today. I'll say that much. Um, so, I'll go through each one and what I've changed. So, uh, Stephen had uh, four kilos of Golden Promise. I can get Golden Promise in New Zealand, but when I chucked it through a converter, uh, Gladfield's Ale Malt is pretty much the same. And I've got a sack of it here, so I'm using that. So, four kilos of that. Flaked oats. Um, I'll just use porridge. Um, so, I've got uh, some Scotch oats that I got for... Harrowies, it is Harrowies. It's probably come from the other side of the world. Um, so that's going to go uh, for the um, for the oats part. Um, brown malt. Luckily, Gladfield already had this. It's quite good today. I'm only spending like twenty bucks buying bits and pieces for this brew because I already had quite a bit of it. So that's Gladfield's brown malt. Same thing. Um, chocolate. I was getting low, this is what I was worrying about. So I've got 250 grams there, and I only need 200, so it's quite good. Um, now, he actually had roast, UK roast barley. And I was quite lucky Gladfields apparently do have a roast barley, but these guys at Brewers Co-op up in Auckland actually had some beards, uh, which I think is UK. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But he had some beards, um, Roast barley. So that's what went, that went in for that. Um, Crafter 3. Now, when I chucked that in the converter, it came out with Gladfield's dark chocolate, which I already had. I'd used it for a quarter of a while ago. And Crystal 45. Um, now, I. Probably change that a little bit, probably a bit lighter, but I really like um, Supernova, which is a crystal malt, um, because it adds a lot of body to it, so it's uh, 130 grams of that goes in. Um, now, I actually left a, I left a uh, message uh, seeming to find out what black patent is. Don't have a fucking clue, mate. So I might take a bit of liberty here and chuck in 100. 30 grams of smoked manuka, because, yeah, nice manuka smokes, nice, manuka smokes a real nice soft, uh, tasty malt, it seems to be not as harsh as, harsh as, um, beach, and all the other smokes, you see, it seems to be very distinctive from New Zealand, but it's actually very, very nice, so, that's what I might change that to, that's a black paint, I couldn't find it, I could not find any reference to what black paint it might be, um, yeah, post something up, boys, if, I, if I've got that wrong. Um, and then got some Trinic and some um, Hirsch Brickle, which is pretty much like a heller. Um, but yeah, um, Brewers Club actually had some of that, so I was quite surprised. I was digging their fridge and they got to about three layers deep of different hops. They buy it in bulk. And they've got these containers just go and you get what you want. And um, so yeah, so I got that. So essentially, and I'll get the, I've already got, um, got some Dutch cocoa. Uh, I might get some cocoa nibs. That's fine. Um, what else? Coffee. I'll just find out whatever coffee I need. Pretty good selection we have here in New Zealand. They're all coffee nuts. 
and I'll get some bourbon. Oh yeah, and I've got some already. These are whiskey chips there, some oat chips from whiskey barrels. So um, he sort of commented, it, commented it needed a bit more bourbon, which is funny. I'm not a big bourbon drinker, believe it or not. Um, for some reason, I missed the boat on spirits. For some reason, I probably drank them too much when I was young. Um, but yeah, like I said, the clone that he brought me, which we still loosely call KBS, but you might, might as well call it KBS Light, probably, um, was very, very enjoyable. It was actually a really nice beer. I actually really, really enjoyed drinking that. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do that. And if I'm a good boy, I'll probably send my bottle back. So, anyway, I'll be having it on for five minutes. So, um, better get into this brew. Right, here we are, uh, night before the brew, and uh, yeah, I'm running behind. I should have had this on yesterday. Um, I was doing, doing the yeast starter, so um, already in here I've got two litres of water with 200 grams of dry malt extract. And lucky I had that much because I didn't need to run out. That'll be just a straight starter, so it'll be a two litre start, I'll put straight in. Now, I did have some M44 uh, yeast, but I'm looking at the dates is nearly a year old, so I actually think it's probably past its best, so I'm not going to risk it. So I'm going away from the recipe already, and I'm going to use some Nottingham yeast. So that's uh, about three months old, and I'll just uh, put a sample of that into that mixture, and that should kick into gear and uh, be all good. So use a sanitized spoon. Normally I put a um, couple of spoonfuls and that's enough to get the next population going and then you still leave a little reserve going and then once it gets up to about six months um, I usually just plonk the whole lot in and I'll do a big five litre starter use two litres and then because it's uh, what do you call it regenerated itself pretty much um, you can start from another six months of that of that new um, what's the word new backup that you have so anyway I'll uh, put this in relatively the plan um, except I've stuffed up my sparge somewhere and I've got extra five litres in there while I was aiming for so uh, instead of having a um, OG of 1072 I've ended up with an OG of 1050 uh, still 6% beer hopefully um, so we'll see what it comes out at and um, but yeah, everything else it smells and tastes nice uh, huge chocolate hit um, it's had two types of chocolate malt go in uh, cocoa nibs plus cocoa powder um, and then 40 grams of uh, freshly milled coffee. I, I milled that five minutes before I put it in, uh, trying to maximize the oils um, in the coffee beans. Um, so yeah, it tastes fantastic. Um, pH was about right. Um, Chuck my salt additions in the mash, water, sparge water, sorry, because I've got to put it in the mash. Uh, but that went relatively to plan. 
But yeah, I think I just overcalculated my spudge. But yeah, I was following grain, what says on the grain father um, website, so I'll see what happens next time. Next, I'll do it again, I'll just watch that spudge. I'll um, do it a bit different, so. But yeah, I'll start cleaning up now, and um, that's the end of the day, so. Um, I'm not sure whether I will age this out the period. I might just, um, I might be drinking this in a couple of months. Probably, probably wait a couple of months. So I'll probably still do the probably four to six weeks before I put the bourbon and extra cocoa nibs in the French oak. Um, sorry, whiskey barrel um, oak in it. Um, so yeah, I'll probably taste it in a couple of months. So this probably won't be a grain of glass. Um, I'll probably get this video up. And uh, but yeah, so from me, that's me everyone on. So. Um, first brewer 2019, <laughs> not a good start, but we'll see how it goes from here.